you're new to cryptocurrency and don't know what an exchange is, centralized exchanges, decentralized exchanges, well, don't worry, guys. In this video, I'm going to take you through exactly what these different types of exchanges are, how they work, and how you can use them. So do me a favor, hit that like button, hit subscribe, and let's get into today's video. So there are three different types of exchanges, the main ones being a CEX, which is a centralized exchange, and a DEX, which is a decentralized exchange, and then a hybrid between the both. Now, a centralized exchange is basically operating from a centralized location, and that's typically what you might have seen in the past with a bank. And there's a number of different benefits for this because you can do things like KYC, which is know your customer. And there's always gonna be people on hand to help you if you have problems with your exchanges. Now, the biggest centralized exchange in the world is at Binance. That has the largest trading volume, but there are also a load of other large centralized exchanges out there, such as KuCoin, Corby, and many others. Now, you also get things called decentralized exchanges. Now, these operate in a slightly different way from a centralized exchange in that they are basically a mediator between two different wallets. And the liquidity and things are provided through this location, but it's a completely autonomous setup. It doesn't require an individual to come in. There's no middleman. So there's a benefit from this in that there is no requirement for KYC or know your customer, which means that people can anonymously transfer and change cash all around the world without any problems at all. And they tend to have tons more different cryptocurrencies available. Another problem that you see from centralized exchanges, and this you saw last year with the collapse of FTX, is you don't really know what those exchanges are doing with those funds, whereas a decentralized exchange doesn't have access to the funds. It's merely taking in the currencies and changing it into something else. So a centralized cryptocurrency exchange, also known as a CEX, is similar to a traditional stock exchange. The buyers and sellers come together and the exchange plays the role of the middleman in the crypto world. Centralized means you have to trust somebody in order to handle your money. And this is what happened last year when FTX went under and a load of people lost a ton of money because FTX was using its money to invest in other companies that ultimately failed. Now, in order to use these exchanges, you basically have to put money. You can use fiat currency or you can transfer crypto from another place into the exchange. You can then use it to go and buy different cryptocurrencies or you can just hold it in that form on the website. So for example, you can just hold GBP there or you could hold USD or you could hold USDT or Bitcoin or whatever it might be. Whenever you then want to change, let's say your US dollars into Bitcoin, they'll then offer you a price at which you can buy Bitcoin at from their reserves, you then give them your US dollars and in return you get your Bitcoin back, which you can then hold on the exchange and when you want to sell it, they will then offer you a price to sell it at. Now here's another list of centralized exchanges and the most well-known one would be Coinbase. Coinbase is very good because it's very easy to use and it's great for onboarding customers, but it does tend to come with higher fees. You've also got other ones like Bitrex, Kraken, Gemini, and Robinhood. As we look at the decentralized exchange then, decentralized cryptocurrency exchanges who aim to stay true to the pure philosophy behind the cryptocurrency industry. A DEX does not rely on a middleman to hold your funds in a marketplace where buyers and sellers come together and process the transactions directly between one another. This is great for P2P or peer-to-peer -peer trading, and they're significantly harder to hack. And as well as that, they don't obviously have access to your funds. So using decentralized exchanges is a far safer method. And then holding your cryptocurrency, whatever that might be, on a ledger, which is like a hard wallet or like a hard drive type wallet, that then is obviously impossible to hack. But you obviously need to look after your keys and keep it safe wherever that might be. There's also hybrids that offer different services on those platforms. So they might offer you to be able to do things like fiat onboarding through a centralized exchange, but also offer a peer-to-peer decentralized aspect as well where you can trade without any middleman interaction and this is a newer concept but it's also something that is catching on as well. Now as we come over to Binance I'm just going to show you around a little bit of this centralized exchange. Now Binance is a great platform to use because it has enormous volume and it's not available in the US but you can access it through using a VPN. Now what you can see down below is all of the different cryptocurrencies. On the left, you've got the little logo that represents it. You've got the name here and then the ticker symbol, which represents it, and then the price of one particular coin. Now we can see that obviously varies hugely, and it's not because necessarily one project is worth more than another. It's down to the market cap divided by the amount of coins. Now Bitcoin, you can see currently sat at $29,300, and then it tells you how much it's been going up and down. Now simply, all I wanna do if I want to trade this, now obviously all I would need to deposit is go up to my wallet and click 
on fiat and spot and then i could deposit and withdraw from that as well and then if i want to trade i would then just click on the particular crypto and you can see here it offers me the trading pair that i'm looking at so if you are holding usdt which is a stable coin linked to the us dollar then I would be able to trade Bitcoin against USDT here. And I'm aware that this looks like a very complicated chart, but don't worry about it. All I would need to do is come down below and select where it says spot. Now, the difference between these ones and these is this is without leverage. Spot means that if I've got $10, I can buy $10 worth of Bitcoin. But if I use $10 and I have a 10x leverage, it means I can use that to buy $100 worth of Bitcoin. This is great because it means I can make potentially more money if Bitcoin goes up. But if Bitcoin goes down and falls 10%, I lose everything. So it obviously comes with its risks. I then select a market, which means it will buy it at the market price. And then I can write in the amount that I want to buy at. So here, for example, I would just write $3,000 or $300 or $30, whatever it might be. And then I would just click on the bottom, the green button and press buy BTC. And obviously if you've got the right USDT in there, it's just gonna go ahead straight away and take the trade. If you go to limit, then you can set the price at which you're willing to buy at. So if you thought that Bitcoin was gonna go down to $29,000, then I can say I might buy one Bitcoin if Bitcoin gets down to $29,000, which means it would need to fall $273 for me to be able to make that trade. If it never gets down there, then I never take the trade. Then I would just have to cancel it in the future and then I can use Use that to make other trades. If you're completely new to crypto, however, and you are not sure how to buy crypto and things like that, well, guys, go across to Coinbase. It's significantly easier to use than any other exchange out there. It doesn't have any of these weird and wacky trading pages, but all you will need to do is deposit your native currency, your fiat currency, whether that's like Euro, USD, GBP, whatever, and then you can go and buy cryptocurrency after you've created an account. You do need to do a KYC, which is know your customer, which means you have to share with them your passport details, various other bits and pieces like that, but ultimately that's there to keep you secure. Remember though, it does affect your taxing and these companies will report back to your country the amount of earnings and things you make that are taxable. So that's that's definitely something to pay attention to. And if you don't want to do that, then you need to go for the decentralized exchanges to keep yourself off the radar. Guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, do me a favor, hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, you want to learn more about trading, cryptocurrency, and how to make money in these, then make sure you subscribe to be kept up to date with all the latest happening. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.